Hey everybody, this is Angie Leach with Too Cool Stamping and today I'm going to show you how to do a beautiful faux patina technique. You can see I have this technique shown as the focal point on my Too Cool cards and I just love the way it looks like actual metal that's been oxidized. Can you see all those different details? I just love it. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Let's get started by showing you all the supplies that you're going to need for this project. First you're going to need an embossing folder and of course the Big Shot to go with that. Next you're going to need four different colors of inks and first you want to have a neutral light color then you'll want to have two medium colors and if you're looking for the traditional aqua color of patina for your um, technique then you will want to make sure you have some sort of blue and a green because that will mix together to make that color and then your final color is any kind of a dark color and I'm using a dark brown here um, but any kind of dark gray or black is also going to work really well then you're going to need three sponges or just some sponges for those uh, last three colors that you're going to be doing You'll also need some Versamark clear embossing ink. We're going to be doing some embossing with gold embossing powder or you can use any kind of metallic embossing powder. We're going to need an embossing buddy or some type of an anti-static pad and then of course your heat tool. Okay, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use a any kind of embossing folder. I'm using the vintage wallpaper embossing folder from Sizzix and I already have some ink on here from when I did my project but I actually use the crumb cake ink and you can use any kind of light colored neutral ink and just rub that right on the front of your embossing folder and it's actually the side that has the writing on it so that's the one you should be using give that some pretty good coverage it doesn't have to be full coverage but pretty good Lay your cardstock piece on there, sandwich it together, and then we're going to run it through our Big Shot. Okay, and then when we open it up, we actually see a piece that it kind of looks like ceramic bisque to me. I really like it just how it is. It's kind of fun just how it is. But we're going to make it even more beautiful. Next we're going to take the Marina Mist and you can use any kind of a medium color ink. If you want the traditional patina look you want to try to stick with a blue and a green. And I'm just going to start sponging over the top of the raised portions and you can just kind of do this randomly you don't have to do really dark coverage over the whole thing but I like to focus on the raised areas those are the ones that you really want the texture to pop so there is the first layer next we're going to use the second color which I'm going to use always artichoke. You just kind of want it to be a progressively darker color. So if you want to use another version of green or really any combination. And as I start to sponge that over the top, you can see right away that the colors are layering and they're kind of turning into more of a teal or aqua type of a color, blue and green mixing together. So they layer really, really nicely. So there's my green. Next I'm going to use for the final layer the Early Espresso Dark Brown. And again you can use any color that you want. You just want to make sure that this final layer is the darkest color because this is really going to be what brings out the richness of all of your raised areas. It's also kind of antiquing in between the raised areas, but it really brings out the richness of the color and the depth of the texture. And that's what really makes this 
technique look fabulous. So you can see how all of the colors are really rich. The raised portions are really accentuated there. Love that look. It's just really fantastic. So this is really cool how it is, but we're going to make it more like patina by putting some metal effects on onto it. Now with all the colors and layers of ink that you have, you have a lot of moisture in that cardstock. So what we want to do is dry it up just a little bit. You, you can either just let it dry or use an embossing buddy or an anti-static pad, anti pad. And I'm actually tapping on it first because I don't want that ink to get all over my embossing buddy. And that should dry up a lot of the moisture. Okay, so that's covered. Now we're going to use Versamark Clear Embossing Ink. And for this, you just want to kind of apply it by the raised areas, but just randomly. Because with the patina, you just want a little bit of the metal to be kind of peeking through. just a little bit here and there. You don't want even coverage throughout. Next we're going to take a metallic embossing powder and in this case I'm using gold but you could use silver or copper really any kind of metallic. And just sprinkle that over your whole piece. Tap off all of the excess. Now, I don't know how well you can see it, but I do have kind of too much for my taste. You can have as much as you want to. But say I have too much here, that's no problem. You can just brush off some with your finger or with a brush. Or if you need a little bit more, you can always add more later after we get this embossed the first time. Then we're going to use our heat tool to melt the embossing powder. And this is when the magic really happens. This is when it really starts to look like patina because you have your metal starting to show through. Oh, it's really starting to look good. Okay, there we go. Can you see that? That is just fabulous. I love how you can really tell right here. I got a lot of metal showing through. I have some over here that's peeking out. But it's just all kind of random, which is how things antique. So anyway, that's the technique. It is so fabulous to do. I know you're going to love it. And the best part about it is you can really make it your own by creating a lot of different color combinations and so so really practice with you know experiment with different ones this one is kind of more of a rust color combination then I did a little bit of rose colors in that one this one I added a little bit of rich razzleberry to it this one has some Concord Crush more of a purpley effect. This one I focused a lot more on the blues. I think I had some not quite navy in there. And then the final one I did more like a light green. So it's just a little bit lighter version of what I had already done. So as you can see there's lots of different colors that you can do. There are lots of different varieties. Endless possibilities. Experiment with it and I can't wait to see your projects on, in the gallery. So thank you so much for spending a little time with me and have fun with your faux patina projects.